everybody, it's Terry Stripling here with 1080 Education. We're so excited to launch this new initiative called On Track and Up to Speed. Perhaps you've seen the introduction with our NSL ambassador and IndyCar driver, Dalton Kellett. From the very beginning, 1080 has explored the intersection of STEM and sports to bring learning to life and to grow the next generation of innovators. In this time of COVID-19, because many events are canceled, Sports teams are working in new ways with gaming companies to generate the spectator experiences we all crave. A look behind the scenes gives us all a chance to see how math, science, and engineering are more than just classroom assignments, they're at the heart of success. Here's your chance to listen in on our 1080 Zoom call with Dalton, an esports engineer who's helping him compete against other drivers in real time without leaving his home. Hi there, my name's Eric Hudak. I'm an engineer at the esports company iRacing. I did not start out as a racing fan. I'll fully admit that. We started developing the National STEM League and uh, the 1080 Student Racing Challenge and all that. But probably because my engineering background, I really have become a huge fan of looking behind the curtain at the race teams and all the engineering that goes into the car and into your, you know, your on-track decisions. And I know those are going to be different when you're working in a simulator. So maybe Eric and Dalton, can you give us some insight into really how the, the data and the math and the physics and all these, you know, measurements and sensors come together to make this experience that everyone's watching on iRacing. We're all quarantined at home, we're, we're staying safe, but I've got my simulator right here. And uh, a lot of, like a lot of the other production drivers do, we have our, our home simulator rigs and we're able to use the iRacing software to compete and hold races against drivers all around the world. So we have a, a league running currently called the IndyCar Challenge. Most of the field is competing in these races every week. First off, a simulator is a, either a machine or a program that uh, tries to realistically emulate what happens in the real world. Um, that could be anything from a plane to um, using modeling to try and solve um, how COVID-19 is going to play out over, over time. Um, in the case of iRacing and in our eSport, uh, that has to do with modeling race, racing cars. So Eric, uh, from, a, from a driver's standpoint, you know, I found that the track models are really realistic like, as an example. We raced at Barber Motorsports Park and coming out of the out, out of turn five, uh, Charlotte's Web there, there's that dip bump in the exit as you're getting the power. And that's almost exactly like it is in real life. How do you get that level of realism from the track to the simulated model? We send a group of, uh, of, uh, of guys over there to scan the racetrack with, uh, with equipment that is similar to what you would use to scan uh, like a surveying, surveying type equipment. You can really tell from scans whether the track's newly paved or if it's really old um, that's the kind of granularity that we can capture in the scans and and that uh, gets translated exceptionally well into the simulation so you start off by scanning the racetrack we bring that data back to the to, back to the the, the the shop essentially and we've got other other folks there that uh, basically build a, uh, a, a what we call a spline but basically it's a ground plane with all those nooks and crannies in it uh, to represent what you would drive on in the simulation. And beyond that, you end up having artists and a bunch of other folks that um, build 3D models of buildings and the fence based on uh, picture reference and even the scan data. And you end up with this product that looks and feels amazingly true to life. It, it really does. I've been running the, the VR set up here and once when you put the headset on you see the grandstands on these racetracks you, you feel like you're really in it. it's so immersive when you have that full experience for sure yeah absolutely the vr just brings everything even more to life than you would on a single single screen for sure no question We are trying to make something that ordinarily or in a, in a simple manner would be static by introducing all of these additional elements to make it quite dynamic. So we have a, a weather model. We have a sky model where the, the sun will move. Uh, clouds will organically appear and disappear. Um, the te track temperature will change. The, the angle of the sun, which uh, on the racetrack uh, impacts how the cars will handle based on things like uh, effective temperature of the tires, how much rubber is put into the racetrack, that impacts, um, that Im impacts the performance of the car. They're racing around the racetrack and they've got engineers and, and uh, other folks designing and collecting information about these cars. 
And uh, that sort of information they can pass to us at iRacing and we can start developing mathematical models that we feed into uh, a physics engine and that can spit out the performance of the, of the particular race car. So you might start with something like information about tires and suspension and how much a car weighs and its inertias along with engine power and, and transmission uh, gear ratios. And with that sort of information and with some feedback from drivers like Dalton, et cetera, uh, we can develop a, uh, a simulation model of, of uh, a particular race cars. So you just brought in all these ideas and these different kind of models that you're overlaying um, to one another to make the experience as real as possible. Um, I've heard that there are some things in it that are a little less than real, like some cars maybe drive through each other instead of crash the way <laughs> in the real world is. So are you guys... Um, now that you've got all this different kind of use for iRacing, are you trying to address those things? Well, for instance, like the driving through, I'm not sure exactly where your example's coming from, but uh, if you're on pit road um, and you're trying to get a, trying to come to your pit crew to get a, to get adjustments or fuel or tires, you can actually drive through the, your opponent car. And that's, that's something we put into that, into the sim on purpose so that there wasn't crashing on pit road, because as a driver, that's something you want to avoid in the first place. So, uh, you know, those type of things like crashes on the racetrack uh, and work, we're working hard on trying to develop uh, better models in that regard. Dalton, how do we know when we're going to catch you racing in iRacing? So you can get the latest updates off of uh, my Twitter, my, my social feeds. We'll have, um, you know, if every week I, I sort of post a schedule of when I'll be online. I'll be, I'll be streaming most of my practices and all of my races. So Twitch TV forward slash Dalton underscore Kellett. That's my Twitch channel. And, uh, you know, you'll have about myself and actual race engineers from AJ Ford Racing and my, my driver coach and mentor, Darren Manning, on there. You'll, you'll, you'll hear us talking strategy, talking you know, when to pit, what's our fuel mileage, what energy do we need to hit to make our pit window, all that kind of stuff. Really exciting. So that's, that's, what, that's where you can catch that. <laughs> oh, she's a lap dog. Nice to see you again, Dalton. Good to see you, Nelson. <laughs> All right, Bye, stop buddy. this recording. <laughs> How do you leave this place? <laughs> <laughs>